Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Once again, this is Messengers of Light, Indy and Chile. Hallelujah. We're here with Pastor Apostle Lizardo Zambra. Hallelujah. We give God the glory for allowing us once again to be here in, in the prayer team. Hallelujah. Because these are my prayer team. Hallelujah. And we thank God for allowing us to be together. You can always contact us at PastorLizardoZambra at gmail.com. Just email me and you can come on in. I look for, I screen my emails every day. I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for you. <clears throat> you can also find us on YouTube, hallelujah. And in YouTube, you can find us at Lizardo Zambra. You can look up the Zoom prayer meetings. You can look up the pastor's Sunday services or warfare prayers that we do on uh, church time. It, things get powerful in our church, glory to God. And God is answering and working together with his church. Hallelujah. And uh, once again, I would like to let you know that our Lord Jesus Christ died for you. He loves you. He gave his life for you. If you haven't come to Jesus and and you know that you're a sinner and you need salvation. Just give your life to Jesus. He has risen. He's sitting at the right hand of God. He sent his Holy Spirit down. And the word of God tells me he's coming back for you. Just give your life to Jesus. And God is going to make a new creation out of you. Hallelujah. He's here to bless you, to love you, to take care of you, to comfort you, to mentor you, and to wash you with his blood. All you have to do is ask him to love you. Hallelujah. And he will. Um, I'm going to have um, uh, another reminder that uh, we're in angelicvoicesministries.com. You can always look us up. Uh, we're preparing a ministry, uh, television ministry. If you're interested in television time, you could be a big church, small church. It doesn't matter. Just contact us and we have a lot of, if you're in the children ministry, you can get in. We have a channel for children. If you're Spanish speaking, so, si tú hablas en español y necesitas meterte en la televisión, lo único que tú tienes que hacer es mandar un email and we talk to you. Hallelujah. And um, we're raising up a French department that hopefully my French speaking girl is working on it. Hallelujah. And um you know, there are different things that are being done. So this is the commercial part of me Messengers of Light. We're going to open up a prayer and we're going to say our good mornings. Hallelujah. Uh, Rafael, can you please pray? Good morning. God bless each, each one of us. Father, we gather here in your name, Lord, that you guide us and give us each one of us wisdom today, that your glory manifests itself in all of us. And we here and gathering is all in one that we praying and practicing your words and reaching out to you, Lord, because he's the only mighty God of all kings of kings, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that we're here teach, trying to learn today a few words. And you, you bless each and one of our, of our, our brothers and sisters here today that we gather as, as in one. And I thank you, Lord, for this day. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, Jackie, it's time for you to pray. Take yourself out of mute. Jackie, you in mute. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. It's my turn, right? Yes, ma'am. God, God bless everyone. I am so blessed to see another day, me and my family. So, right. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we know that you are in the midst of us. We welcome Abba. We welcome Jesus. We welcome the Holy Spirit. Lord. We ask you, Lord, Father God, to take control and to continue to bless each one of us this morning to supply our needs, Lord, according to your riches and glory, Lord, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, because you never come late, Lord. You are always, you're an on-time God, Lord, and I just want to thank you this morning for your goodness, Father. We thank you, Lord, 
Father God, we pray for the people that are listening, Lord. Father God, we ask you, Lord, to give them ears to hear, Lord. Father God, break the chains in their lives, Lord, Father God. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just, we ask you, Lord, to have your way, to continue to have your way, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for my pastors. Thank you for my brothers and sisters, Lord. Thank you, Father God, because you came to, um, what's that word? You came, Lord, to set the captives free, Lord. And we pray for the people that are hurting today, Lord. We pray, Lord, for even in the group that we're in, Lord, Father God, for your prayer, this prayer meeting. Lord, Father God, we have needs and we have wants, Lord, Father God. And we just ask you, Lord, we present our, our wants and our needs this morning, just thanking you in advance, Lord, for answering, for coming on time, Lord. I love you with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, Lord. And I just want to thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We Amen. thank you so much, thank Lord. You. We agree. Thank you. We're going to have the apostle with the reading of the word this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless everybody. Praise the Lord. God, for the Lord is our strength. Amen. So we're going to read from the word again. Yes, so we got the word. Um, James Amen. chapter. God bless everybody. James chapter 4. God James. Apostle James. Bless you, Jackie. James chapter 4. 17 verses. We're going to start from verse 1. James chapter 4. Yes, chapter 4. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. When you find it, please give me a man. Praise the Lord. I repeat, James chapter 4, verse 1. James. This, this book is so, this book is a, this book is a very strict book. It's very strict, man. It's very strong, you know. He was the council of Jerusalem when he spoke. It was very strict. He didn't play, you know. It was very, you know, they come for a round table. They should come to James with the apostles on the round table who make decisions for the church and things was going on. And he speaks very strong in his letters. I believe he's the half brother of the Lord Jesus. I believe something like that. Yeah, I think it's one of the, it was a lot of couple like three James. It was the half brother of the Lord. Got it, everybody got it? Can I get it, man? Everybody have it? Amen. Amen. Okay, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For, do, for where do wars and fight come from among you? So we got wars. The question, where wars come, fight comes among you? Where's coming from? Do they not come? This is James saying to us. Do they not come from your desires and pleasure? Look at that. The war and your members. So he's saying your, your hmm. desire and fight comes for yourself, for this flesh, for this thing. And if we, I'm going to take you quickly to Romans, but Paul spoke to the Romans. He says in chapter 3, listen to me, Romans chapter 7, he spoke to himself. Romans chapter 7, verse um, uh, 19 to, to, uh, to 20, uh, uh, to 23. Look what he says. He's going to speak to him so quick. Nobody can understand this thing. is so deep, man. You know, he's, well, he's speaking to himself. Look what he says. Before go back to James. J uh, Romans 7, verse 19 to 23. Look, for the good that I would do, I do not do. But the evil that I do not do, I practice. You see that? He's practicing something he's supposed to be doing, but somebody's doing that inside himself. This is the whole nature. Look at that. Now, if I do not what I want to do, it's no longer I do it, but sin, which the was in me, that sin nature, you see? 21. I'll find then a law that is evil present with me, the one who wants to do, to do good. You see? He wants me to do good. It's a battle there. 22. For I delight in the law of God, with what? According to the inward man, the newborn nature, been born again, you delight. That's nature. It's, it's desiring for the things of the law. But he sees another law. It's outward law. Look what it says. But I see another law in my members, one against the law of my mind, and bring me to captivity to the law, a uh, uh, law of sin, which is my members. You see, and he said, "What well, man who dealing from this body of death?" He said, "Thank be to God, Jesus Christ, the Lord." So when the, we are, I may serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So we got to make a decision. So that's what it says James right here. You see, it's a war going on right now. It's a war against ourselves. Your war is not against your brother or sister. It's against the, it's against the powers of darkness against yourself. We got three enemies. I was saying this. The word says it. The world, the devil, and the flesh. So this flesh got to be put to sleep. You got to crucify it. Amen? And stay in the spirit. That's what Paul says back to Galatians. Walk in the spirit. You should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Uh, two. Number two now. Verse two now, James. You lust and do not have. And have. You murder and covenant and cannot obtain. So you fight in war. You see? And you cannot, you cannot do what you have because you ask amiss. Because you, you, you do not ask. You see that? 
So you're asking for something you want. God ain't going to give it to you because he knows your heart and intentions of your heart. So you got to stay in the spirit. You got to die to that nature. That nature got to die to receive something from the Lord. God wants to bless us, but when it's, when it's full of selfish gains, for selfish desire, he ain't going to give it to us because you're going to get hurt. Uh, three, because there's three dreams. You act, you do not receive it because you act a miss. You may, you may what? Spend it on your own pleasure. You see? So God, he don't want you to fall in that in the pleasure thing because he's going to mess you up. Let me take a quickly back to um, 1 John chapter 2, the epistle of John chapter 2, verse 5. Go ahead, and John. The, 1 John chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. And um, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Verse, in verse 15, go ahead, it says 15. By the pleasure, it says in chapter two, chapter first John chapter two verse fifteen, do not love the world nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You see, the Father, if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. It's made like people think the church, the love of the world, they ain't going nowhere. Because it's for all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father but of the world. You see, that's, that's what says back in James. He that he that becomes a friend of the world becomes an enemy of the Lord. You see, the verse seventeen for the world passes away in the lust of it, but he who does the will will abide forever. You see that? That's the difference there. If you want to walk with the Lord, you got to accept yourself for everything out there for yourself. But it's going to have, you got to pay a price. You got to warfare. It's a warfare going to repeat, going around. So I talk to you. And we got to fight constantly against this, against this uh, ourselves because the devil wants to go forth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what it says back out. She's always quoted, uh, Bishop mm -hmm. Cousin, as in, uh, in Psalm 66, verse 18. He says it like this uh, If I regret iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. God will, ain't going to hear you. He's not going to hear you because you're not regretting iniquity. You're playing with sin. You're not confessing your sin. That's what you got to confess it to you do quickly because that, that could destroy you. Look what says four now. Mm -hmm. All adulterers and adulterers, do you not know that the friendship with the world is empty in God? Whoever therefore become, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You see that? So we got to be careful. We're in the world, but we're not in the world. We got to be separate from the world, amen? That says, fine. Or do you think that the scriptures say in vain that the spirit of the world is in, in, um, in us and jealousy? No way. But he said he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud and gives more grace into the humble. You see? We got to stay in the humble uh, humble level so you could grow in the things of the spirit. Um. There's many people still walking in proudness. They still are uh, uh, not submitting to not being to the word of God. And God wants you to be obedient. What you're doing, you're walking in a spirit of jealousy, a spirit that's not from the Lord. And the enemy uses that to, to bombard you, to, to distract you. And, and we got to die to that own nature. Because that thing could destroy us. And God don't want that, but many people choose that. You see what I'm saying? So we, so we got to stay in the spirit constantly. So we walk in love. Amen? We got to walk in love. That's why he said he resists the proud and gives more grace into the humble. No, God wants to be humble. But the more you stay humble, the more God is going to bless you. That's what it says back in, in 1 Peter um, verse 5. Look what it says five, 1 Peter 5, 5. Likewise, you your younger people. So be your soul to your elders. Yes, all for all of you, submit, one, submit to one another. Be clothed what? Humility. For God is, resists the proud again. He gives grace into the humble. You see that? So it says in six, therefore humble yourself under the mighty hands of God that he may what excel you in due time. Cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. So when we stand that level of humbleness, God's going to care for us. God's going to receive us and we're going to walk in the spirit. We're going to be blessed by the Lord. But we got to be sincere with the Lord. You see, that's what he says again in James. He will God be sister prank and more Christian to the humble. When you prank, you brand it. That's the it's, it's one thing being proud, you don't know what you're doing, you think you know more than anybody else. And, and I said, that's when Amy's a weapon because in heaven started out in heaven. And anyone, he was so proud, he wanted to be like God and got kicked him out of heaven. Amen. Look at seven. Therefore, submit to God and resist the devil. He's going to flee from you. So we got to resist that devil, my brother and sister. We got to say no to him in his face. He's going to come offering. He's going to try you to compromise. And you got to rebuke him quickly because he don't want you to go forth for God. He don't want. That's what it says back in Peter, first Peter 5 again, verse 8. Because it says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks up us like a ruin and seeking who could devour. So he's watching us right now. He's watching how to devour us. But if you stay alert, you stay submitted to God, you're going to know what he's doing. You're going to be watchful. You're going to have the victory. Then he cannot touch you. He could bring everything he wants. But once you walk into the spirit, once you humble yourself before God, and you submit to God's word, be a doer, according to James, the devil got to get out of there. Let the, when the devil knocks in your house or your door, your spirit, when the, let the Holy Spirit open and tell the devil, it is written, it is written. He's got to go. Amen? 
9, I mean, verse 8 now. Draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you what? Uh, you sinners, purify your heart, you double-minded. So we got God sent us to, to you see, what we got to draw near to God. You got to draw near to God. That's what it says back in, in, in the book of Chronicles by the king. He told his king, he gave him a word to the, to the prophet, to the king. Let me go there quick in chapter 15 and verse 2. Look what he told him. This is King Asa. Asa, A-S-A. Asa, what he says in verse 2. The God says in verse 1, Now the Spirit of God came upon Ezerod, the son of God, the son of, uh, the son of Abad Abadab. That was one of the prophets. Look what he told him. He went out and he met Asa, the king. And said to him, hear me, Asa, O Judah, Benjamin, the Lord is with you while you are with him. You hear that? If you seek him, he will be fine of you. But if you forsake him, he's going to forsake you. So it's our choice to walk with the Lord. You see that, guys, my brother and sister? So we got to be watching the Lord. We got to stay in the spirit. We got to see what, hear what God is telling us. I repeat, so this is back in. Draw near to God. He's going to draw near to you. Cleanse your hands. Who? You sinner. Wash your soul in the blood. Wash yourself in the word. Purify your hearts. Right? That's what God said. Keep your heart with all things for what is the issues of life. That's what says the Lord. The bondage of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So you got to put a fire the heart. Watch, you're going to be double-minded. And there's a lot of double-minded people inside the church. You'd be surprised, man. They don't believe they believe. It's like, like a wave. God says, no, you got to stay in believing regardless of what you're going through. Don't let anybody take away your faith. Don't let anybody take away your, your, your confidence. Okay, it says in, in 10, humble yourself therefore on the side of the Lord. He may lift you up. You see that? So God wants to lift us up. He wants to accept us, but we got we to gotta stay in God's perfect will. We got to walk in the spirit and stay faithful to the Lord. But when you don't walk in the spirit, what's going to happen? You're going to walk in the flesh. It's going to bring problems. It's going to bring um, situations. That's what enemy wants. Amen. Of course, that's in Job chapter 22, verse 20 and verse 29. When they cast you down, he, he said, association will come. You see that? He will save the humble person. See, whatever happened, God's going to sell his people. He's going to sell us to a high I think the people of the earth cannot receive that because then the kingdom of darkness, but we're in the kingdom of light. We're working with the Lord. We're working with the kingdom of glory. You see, so just say, humble yourself on the side of the Lord. He will lift you up. Uh, 11, do not speak evil. Look what it says here now about speaking. speaking. That's we got to be careful when we speak about brothers and sisters, man. Look what it says in verse 11. Do not speak evil one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of his brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law. And he judges the law. You see that? If you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a a judge, you see that we pay, we, you know, who will be to judge somebody else? What's this poor, sp or a spiritual person could judge all things? He cannot be judged. If you walk in the spirit and you speak in the will of God, God can use to judge somebody else righteously, like a judge. But that person is playing with the church, playing with the world. I cannot use a person because he's being a hindrance. What you're doing, you're judging. That's what God says. Judge them. Matthew said the same thing. Judge not, you should not be judged. With well, the same rush, you're going to come back to you. This says 12. Therefore, there's one Lord giver who is able to save and destroy. That's the Lord. Who are you to judge your another? You see that? Who are we? No, man. We're here to condemn nobody. But God raises us up to do some, put something righteously. We judge it directly. God's going to use us for his glory. Spiritual men judge all things according to Corinthians, but nobody could judge them. Amen? Uh, uh, 13. Come on, you who will save. Today and tomorrow are we to go in such and such. City and spend year and there and buy and sell and make a profit. This is what type of people tomorrow's gonna be another day. Get married and drink and have a good time. No, man, you can't think like that. Tomorrow's promise to nobody. You see that? We got PP. What's it? Come to say today, today or tomorrow. No, no, no. We're gonna do such, such things in the city and spend whatever we want every time. No, no. What says the 14? Wherefore you do not know what will what will happen tomorrow. We don't know. What is your life? For it's like a vapor that spirit for a little time. Then it vanishes away. You hear it? It's like a drop. So we got to make sure we're working with God. Make sure you're working with the Lord and Spirit and truth and stay faithful to his calling and stay obedient to the Holy Spirit, what he starts to do. Tomorrow's promise to nobody. It's promise to those who are working with the Lord. Only God knows the future. Only God knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Anything could happen out of nowhere. Why? Right? Because God already knew about it. Right here, the word of God is prophetical. It's going to tell us what's going on. I don't have to read As we study, it's going to tell us what's happening right now. That we live in an end time, that this is going to happen. It's going to be rumors of war. It's going to rise up a lot of riots. It's going to rise up a lot of hate, a lot of anger, a lot of forget about it. The world says about that already. And we're living in it now. We're about to be entering the three little little, we're entering the great tribulation. But God's going to get us out of here before anything happens. But now he's dealing with the church because the church is not ready to go to heaven. She's still praying church. There's too much hypocrisy. There's too much hate. There's too much unforgiveness. And God ain't going to tolerate that. That's what said back in Peter. Jeremy must begin in the house of the Lord.
Judgment's going to have stuff on the poop it down because he wants everything in order because he's not out of confusion. That's why I had that dream. I told you I had that dream. Like I was saying I was in, the, in a chaotic um, system. Everybody was going to do their own thing back and forth. Crazy, looking for hope. There was no hope, no nothing to somebody could give to show them how to walk, go forth. They was blinded. It was out of chaotic. And God came out of nowhere. He started in the middle. He started taking out what he didn't like and putting his stuff in the middle. He was putting anything back in order, in other words. He was doing his bidding, his working. Everybody's just still, still frozen, man. It was amazing, you know? I mean, this guy's going to put everything in order. Whatever's going on in the elections, whatever's going on all around us, all this all this stuff, all this uh, cha uh, chaotic thing, all this COVID thing, man, people being scared, frightening, people dying. God is in control of the future, not the devil. We got to look up the Lord. It's the Lord who got the solution. He knows each one of us. He knows each one of us. Well, he also says in, in, in Peter, the Lord knows who are they, his. The Lord knows who are his. And if you walk in the Lord, God knows you belong to you. You belong to him. Now, if you come rebel against the law, you start compromising. What's going to happen? You're going to wind up in a bad situation. It's going to cost you. That's what I said back. As we see right into him, present forth his death. So we got to be careful, saints. Amen? Uh, 15, and, st and stay. You should say, if the Lord's will, you see, we should live and do, do this and that. You got to make sure it's the Lord's will. It is the Lord will to go, hey, let's go to this over to his city or do this for his glory or, or open a business, for example, or about do this or buy over here or, or selling, whatever. Make sure it's God's will. Because if you do it on your own, it's going to cost you. But the enemy is watching. Uh, 16, by now you will boost your utterance. I repeat, you boosting your utterance, all such boosting is evil. See, we cannot be boosting. But as many boosts in the church, when you boost, it's going to be going to bring being foolish. You cannot be, that's what says Paul in and, and, uh, and your iterance. You cannot, yeah, but you push your iterance, you cannot be iterant. It's not, that's what says Paul. If, if any wants to be iterant, go be iterant. If, if any man wants to be iterant, go ahead and be iterant. You want to go ahead and be iterant. I don't want to be iterant, man. It's dangerous when you're iterant. You're acting foolish. You know what you're doing. You think you know what you're doing. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the, uh, the information from the God himself, from the Holy Spirit, and it's going to cost you. Because he wants to get you. He wants to. Forget about it. He wants to bash you up, put you in a situation of bondage, went in some way, say, oh, I should be one of those, man. And I was doing the things of God and I don't waste. You're going to start telling people they're going to be, you're going to be mocked. The devil's going to be laughing at you. And God don't want that for you, but that's what we choose. The devil wants to take his people, man. God's people rip them apart and mock them. Like he did with Samson in the arena. Ha, <laughs> ha. Look at him. He's supposed to be this and that. His God, his God stuff. He, the devil wants to mock God, but the devil ain't going to mock God. God, God, God got a great army he's raising up, amen. We are the army of God. We're being sharpened. We're being trained. We've been chosen by the law. That's why we got three of them. We got to crucify our own nature because the battle is constantly. We got to say no to the world and we got to rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. That's why we got to submit to God and resist them. And 17, therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it is sin. You see, if you know what you, if you know you got to do is good, if you don't do it, you're playing with sin, man. You may be informed, in other words, you know what you got to do, but you don't want to do it. They got to say, help my brother and sister over there. got to help my the son, my son and daughter over there with a mission offering or helping with some kind of stuff. And you walk away, you're playing with sin. You're compromising your walk. God made us give us instructions through his word. We got to follow those instructions. But when you don't follow God's instructions, it's going to come back to you. And you're going to see the result that you messed up big time. Because you didn't hear the instructions of the Lord. You did your own little instructions. It happened like King Saul. He was instructed to go to kill the kings and the people and everybody because they were wicked. There was seas of madness, and, and, and he came back to life with the king and the animals. And God rebuked him to the prophet Samuel, and, and the, he took the, king, the sword and cut him in peace in front of Samuel, in front of Saul. And he told him, he told him, behold, as, uh, rebellion is, is like witchcraft. He told him, rebellion is like witchcraft. And stubborn is like idolatry. So there's a lot of people in the church are playing with witchcraft. I, I'm talking about probably, probably doing it, throwing all kinds of spells. But witchcraft is like a rebellion, it's rebellion, man. And that's the enemy. We cannot be rebelling against the Lord. God, God wants sacrifice. He wants obedience. And let us stay obedient, my brother and sister. Let us stay faithful. Go, God, he wants to be faithful and obedient to him. Regardless of your situation, the little you have, God will surely multiply you. God will surely bless us in his time. The word says, many are the afflictions of the right, but the Lord delivers out of them all. Joy is going to come in the morning. And it says, Paul, to the Philippians and saints, for my God will supply all your needs, according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus. For his glory spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially. God bless you. I love you guys. Continue searching for the Lord. Bishop.
That's funny. Hello. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wonderful word. Hallelujah. Wonderful. To God be the glory. So, um, I feel like praying today and talking about deliverance. So I want to read a verse in Isaiah 61, 1, the word of God says, the spirit of the Lord of God, the spirit of the Lord God is upon us because he has anointed us to preach good tidings to the poor. He sent us to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty. See, that's what a lot of people forget, that God has anointed us to proclaim liberty and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. So right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, sure. I thank you so much for each and every one of us. I want to pray and preach to the good to those that are bound, to the good, to those that, that are poor, to good, to those that are in need, to good, to those that are sick, Lord. Because your word says that we're here to preach good tidings, good news. And the good news is that Jesus Christ has spoiled principalities and powers in the cross and he made an open show of them. And you have anointed the body of Christ, hallelujah, to preach to the poor. If you feel like you're poor, well, I have good news for you. God said, let the poor say, I am rich. Because God's given us an inheritance that's incorruptible. And if you only understood that, you know, by faith we live in God. By faith we tap into our resources in God. If you need healing, you ask for healing, you get healing. If you need love, you tap into God. He says, I am love. If you need joy, you tap into God, he gives you joy. If you need food because you're hungry, you tap into God and he provides food. <laughs> Our God is the source of life. If you feel confused or bound by the power of the enemy, then you reach out to the name of Jesus Christ, name that is above all name. And you get the deliverance. We have an incorruptible inheritance that the world did not give us. Our inheritance cannot be corrupted in any type of way. The world didn't give it to us. The world can't take it away. And we have a never ending source of provision. You need money. You know, the biggest testimony to me I was telling my sister Sylvia the other day about money, right? And I'm not a money preacher, but I want to talk to you a little bit about something that God showed me. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that says that, and, and I'm not trying to get money from nobody. So don't think that I'm doing this to get money from you. I'm just going to show you that we have a, unlimited resources in God and a lot of people limit this to money but this is for health for mental status you know the enemy could attack your mind and your, your problem might not be finances it could be just that you can't sit down and concentrate but you know what? You know, God says, I haven't given you a spirit of confusion, but of power, love, and of sound mind. God says, I've given you the mind of Christ. But that does not change the fact that the enemy will try to attack our mind. It's what we receive. If the enemy attacks our, our finances, 
because I'm going to go back to the testimony. And um, God wants to test you if you're going to believe for his supernatural provision. Because the thing is that people limit God. You know, there are some people that have more faith for one thing than faith for other. There are people that can believe for millions, but they can believe for healing in their body. There are people that they could believe, you know, that they, they, they got a, a wonderful mind to, to create buildings. They got skills for entrepreneurship and they could believe God for that, but yet they can't believe God for a healthy relationship with others. Not maybe not, you know, a man or woman, even with others, you know, they 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 struggle with that. And it's not, you know, our faith has to be in a full circle. Full. A circle is connected. If you make a circle, it goes from one end and it meets to the other. When we believe in God, we have to believe God in a full circle. Not in, in a broken. There should be no break there. There shouldn't be I'm going to believe God to get me a pencil, but I'm not going to believe God to get me a pen. You know, yesterday I said to the Lord, Lord, I need a garbage can so that I could throw my garbage in the garbage can. And then somebody throws out one of them nice little manual little garbage cans that you step on that I don't even have to touch on and the lid opens and I looked at it and I saw it from distance and one of the ladies <laughs> in the building says to me did you see the garbage can they threw out and I did saw it but I was playing lazy so I didn't want to go get it and I said, I saw it. She said, you know what? I'm going to go get it for you because you need a garbage can. Not only did God answer my prayer, but God had somebody deliver it to me. <laughs> what does that say? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I like your amen sign because I mute everybody. So here, all saying... I'm going to talk about money. And I was talking to this about my sister the other day, but it's important because the thing is that we lack knowledge. We lack knowledge. So all of us, it's not only you, it's not the hero of the world. It's all of us. The counsel of God is vast and we're learning his way. It's not saying, oh, Kat needs knowledge or Jackie needs knowledge or the apostle needs knowledge. Every child of God, needs knowledge to the way of God because his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. The way he does things is not the way we do things. Because Satan did a number on us. My goodness, it took years and years. Judy, you gonna make an amen sign? Yeah, you go. I love it. Make your amen signs. I love that. That's awesome. Do it with, yeah, you go. I, I need my cheerleaders. So if whatever trial you're in, I don't care what trial you're in. Trials are trials. We're going to be tested in our finances. We're going to be tested for our children. We're going to be tested in our relationships. God is even going to test us if we're going to dare take a step without him. Because God tests us in all sorts of things. Amen, Judy? Praise God. Amen. I got my cheerleaders. They, they, they outsmart me now. They got their little signs that say amen at me. Now, if you understand that God's given us an incorruptible inheritance, this verse, let me see if I find it for you. Give me a minute incorruptible means that it cannot be corrupted it cannot be corrupted satan didn't give us our inheritance hold on god has given us an incorruptible inheritance 
Let's go to First Peter. No, I'm going to show it to you. First Peter 1, 4. Look at that. It was right in front of my face. If I tell you, I haven't even moved the Bible. It's, I'm going to start at three and two. Elect according to God. Elect to the... Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification. In other words, he puts us through the cleaning process, taking out the old and putting in the new. Okay? Of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace be multiplied. Now, I'm in First Peter. Chapter 1, verse 3 now. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us unto, again, unto a living or lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In other words, God has took us back. He's got us back. We got hope. He did this through the resurrection of Christ. It talks about grace. It talks about sprinkling. It talks about sanctification. But in verse 4, it talks about the inheritance. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. Now, if you know what I know, you would not believe it. The Bible tells me that I'm sitting in heavenly places. And if my inheritance is reserved in heaven, that means this earth cannot corrupt it. But the wonderful thing about me is that I can go boldly into the throne of God and ask God. for anything you know what i've done i go into that inheritance i tell the lord i tap into the inheritance that belongs to me and i get what i need because it's mine and it's reserved for me i got my own inheritance you got your own inheritance and here in these verses it talks about sanctification peace but you know what he says here in isaiah and I'll read it again because it's so powerful. I'm, in Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. What does he want me to say to the poor? Poor, you're rich. You're rich, 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 rich. You know why? Because you have an incorruptible inheritance. But you want to know what? In order to tap into your incorruptible inheritance, you got to do things God's way. Because it, I always said this, if you are a millionaire uh, 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 or a person with a, you don't even have to be a millionaire. You could be a person that's living okay and you got money and your money is in your bank and then you have a child. But if your child is doing drugs and your child is squandering things and your child is doing whatever it is that it's doing it's going to be hard for you to give that debit card to that child because you're going to say this child is going to squander or hurt themselves with what i have they could get an overdose they could go and get drunk and drive and kill themselves they're going to be irresponsible and that's how God looks at us. God looks at us as children. And he knows when we can handle a blessing and when we can't. So he says, tell the poor that they're rich. And you know what he says to the brokenhearted? If somebody broke your heart in Isaiah 61, 1, he <coughs> says, that he has sent us to heal the brokenhearted. If your heart's been broken, God is there to heal it. Just let him do it.
this is why, you know, I learned something. I don't give my heart to nobody. Nobody. My heart belongs to Jesus. I love my husband. He's wonderful. I love my daughter. My daughter is the love of my life. I love my husband, but I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I love sincerely without hypocrisy, but my heart belongs to Jesus because the only one that won't break my heart is Jesus. So I love with wisdom. Amen. Even our heart, that's why God says that with the heart man believes, our heart is very delicate and we got to know who we give it to. That's why a lot of people get hurt. When you give your heart to the wrong thing or the wrong person, you wind up hurt. But God says that he's here to heal the brokenhearted. And you know how he heals the broken heart? You want me to tell you? When you give your heart to God. You know, a lot of people in this world are looking for love. Stop looking for love. God is love. God is love. If you let God in your heart and you receive love, I'm going to give you a testimony about love. I remember that when I got married to the pastor, you know, my husband's a wonderful man. He seeks God for real. People could say whatever they want to say about whatever. Maybe he doesn't have the talents that I do, and he sure don't. But this man seeks God, and I give God the glory. But still, He's not perfect. And when I first got married, I had a misconception of what love was. I thought that he was supposed to love me in some supernatural way. And no, nah. I got so mad. I got in the roof of my building where I work. I got in God's face because, of course, I was young and rude and nasty in God's face. And God is so good that he had patience with me. And I was screaming at God, talking about, Lord, why are you allowing this? Why are you doing this? Why are you allowing this man to talk about submit and not love? I used to cry so much. And then God said, that's because you're looking for love in the wrong place. And I said, what are you talking about? You said, husband, love your wife. He said, yes, I did. They have to love you sacrificially, but they're not love. I'm love. I'm love. And I was like, wow, that came to me in a revelation. Let me show you that. In uh, 1 John, in verse 8, chapter 4, verse 8 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. <laughs> and if God is love, then I have to give my heart to God so that he can fulfill the desire of my heart, which is to be loved. I need to fill that broken heart that I had because I gave it to so many wrong places. I made so much mistakes with that heart. So I'm talking about an incorruptible inheritance that we have and believing God in a whole for peace. You know, the devil didn't give you peace. There's no reason why Satan steals your peace. If, if Jesus said, I give you peace, not like this world gave, I give unto you. Then why would the devil come cause this massive disaster and you cannot sit down for a second and get your composure together and remind yourself that you have to walk in peace and not let the enemy. Sometimes you have to sit down, sit down, take a second, shake yourself and say, listen, the devil's trying to steal my peace and stop him. Because Jesus said in John, I give you peace, not like this world gives on to you. I give it on to you. So if Jesus gave it to you and the inheritance is incorruptible, 
then Satan cannot corrupt what God's given. We're the ones that give that foothold and we give away what God's given to us. And then we blame others because the enemy is using somebody else to try to infiltrate us. But we don't wrestle against flesh and blood and we're not ignorant to Satan's devices. Where's my cheerleaders? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So when he says he came to heal the brokenhearted, you know what? If your heart's broken, think about that. Stop giving your heart that belongs to Jesus to somebody else. Uh, you can make another sign if it's if not an amen, right? Ouch. <laughs> Either way, you know I always say that in my in my church. If you can't say amen, you say ouch. But you you praise God. Either way, because you know what? So I've made those mistakes, and I'm talking about our inheritance. Our inheritance in God, it's like God's giving you mercy. And you won't give mercy to somebody else. You know, that happened to, to the guy that went and borrowed all this money. And the king forgave his debt. But then when somebody else owed him money, he was in that guy's face talking about pay me everything that you owe me. Pay, pay. That's a parable. And instead of giving mercy back, because that's our inheritance, giving what's been given to us by grace, we're rough and angry and bitter, and we don't give what God's given to us. And we have to give that peace. We have to give that love. We have to give that mercy. We have to give the joy that God's given us, because you know what? Nobody wants to be a Christian because all they see is bitter and anger. They, if we could reflect who God tells us we're supposed to reflect, which is him. We're supposed to reflect Christ's glory to Jesus. Amen. And he says, proclaim liberty. Last night I had a dream. You know, I have seen some crazy dreams. And we were somewhere. I don't know. It was a gathering of somehow. I don't know where we were. And uh, there was a family that had need. And we were praying. And as we were praying, um, the brother was telling me that he wanted his family member delivered. And I saw this line. And in the line, there was different people. But different people were being delivered. And this guy, he really wanted his sister to be delivered. And I remember taking his sister in my hands and laying hands on her. And that demon fought me tooth and nails. But you know what? The power of God is present. And that woman got totally delivered. I took the sister of this guy and put her in his hands and said, here's your sister totally delivered. Because God says that the spirit of the Lord is upon us to set people at liberty. The spirit of the Lord is so that we can set people free. And not only that, he says that the anointing and the spirit of the Lord is upon us because we are going to open up the prison doors to those that are bound. All this is the inheritance, the incorruptible inheritance that belongs to the body of Christ. And if you don't believe me, that's the same thing that God said to Apostle Paul in the book of Acts, that the anointing that had came upon him was to set the Gentiles free. 
to open them up, to set them free from bondage. And if you go to the book of, um, I think it's Isaiah. Let me look this up. Hold on. I'm talking about an incorruptible inheritance, you know, and, and if we tap into the source, which is God Almighty, the Father, he's the source. This is why the enemy wants to keep people in bondage, because who we are in God, hallelujah, we are deliverers. We have been set free to bring the ministry of reconciliation to others, to let them know that Jesus Christ is not angry at them. Their sin is not being held against them. See, the accuser does that. He stands before people accusing them. Jesus Christ is telling them, I have forgiven you. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Learn from me, for I am humble of heart. Hallelujah. Where is that verse, Daddy? What? Oh, ye who are the one I that just That is quoted? in Matthew, right? Let me let me Matthew, see. right? All you oh. who are heavy laden, come to me and rest, for my yoke is oh, easy and my burden that's is that's light. That's eleven. Matthew chapter 11. Chapter 11. 11. Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30. Man. 28 to 30. Come to me. Rest. I want to show you what the Bible says about a true fast. Hold on. It's in Isaiah, right? Yeah, it's in Isaiah. Oh. Well, what about the true fast? Hold on. Yeah. Isaiah 58, Pastor. Okay, mm -hmm. let me look for it. Thank you, Cap. Verse 6, this is not the uh, fast I have chosen. Verse 6. Uh, what you got, honey? See, verse 6, it says, it's not the fast that I have chosen. It's there the you one. go. Yeah. Verse, Listen verse to this. I say wow. you're 58, and, and I'm talking wow. about verse what? what? Huh? Verse what? 6. 6. Thank you. Got it. Thank I you. I say you're 58, verse 6. Listen, listen, I'm talking about a true inheritance that God's given us. Just hold your finger right there. I want to show you something in um in the book of Acts when God calls the apostle. Just give me a minute. See if I find it. Just give me a minute. Okay, listen. Let's go to Isaiah um, for a minute. Put your finger in uh, in Isaiah 58 and let's go to Acts 26 for a second. And I'm going to show you that when God called the Apostle Paul, he called him. And the reason I use Apostle Paul is because a lot of people dare to say that the 12 apostles were was with God, and that's why they had the ability. But Apostle Paul was called like we're called in a different time and season. Jesus had already resurrected. Amen. And the Holy Spirit spoke straight to Apostle Paul. Glory to God. He had a vision. He saw Jesus. God called him. And I've had plenty of visions and seen Jesus and God's called me something similar. And I'm sure you've got, you guys have visions and God has called you. Praise the Lord. I know I'm not the only one. Anyway, talking about Apostle Paul, it says here in, verse, in chapter 26, verse 15, 
and, and, and I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. But arise and stand up to thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. I was telling um, one of my girls yesterday that God calls us for a purpose. You see that? If we pursue the purpose of God, because what happens is that we make a big mistake in this life. We get desires and we want to pursue the desires of our heart. That's an error. Somebody say that's an error. That's an error. It's an error. We have to pursue the purpose of God. It says here, to make thee a minister and witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles whom thou, whom now, unto whom now I send thee. To do what? 18 tells you to open their eyes. That's back to Isaiah 50, um, 61 that I read, um, setting the captives free to opening the prison doors. It says uh, to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light and the powers of Satan unto God, that they may receive the forgiveness of sin and the inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So God opens us up. He delivers up. He delivers us from darkness to light. And he does that through the anointing and the breaking of yokes out of our lives. But he uses people to do that. If you understand that, say amen. Or oh, let me see your little signs. Amen. Amen. You see? Amen. So he Amen. used Apostle Amen. Paul like that, right? And now God says, I'm going to show you what a fast is. Because a lot of people stop eating, right? And they say, this is a fast. And they say, so in, in, in Isaiah 58, starting in verse 6, because he talks about, is this Isaiah 58? I want you to see it. Isaiah 58, verse 6. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? In other words, God wants to see the children of God move under his anointing. That we begin to mature and grow so that he could use us to deliver the people that need. But if we don't stay still and we don't let God prepare us and mold us and shape us and develop us, because you know what? There are people out there casting out demons and they don't even use the name of Jesus Christ. You can't do that. Because Jesus said, in my name, you shall cast out devils. So in order for us to work effectively in the inheritance and in the power and in the glory and in the love and in the mercy and in the peace and in the provision and everything that God's given us, in order for us to flow there, we have to know who we are and what God has provided. but we want to go ahead and do our own thing and go before God. And then the enemy, you know what he does? He captures us because we're walking in ignorance. And he says it, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Boing, 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 boing. Not a boing. The boing boing of the brain. Four or six. So, yeah. You see, Raphael, we cannot serve God in our own understanding. We got to let God prepare us and equip us so we can be effective in this world. Humanity needs the church. Humanity needs the body of Christ. Humanity needs us. 
there's not one apostle Paul. There's a whole body of Christ that we need to come together and learn what God is talking to the church. Look, verse seven. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? And of course, you're not going to bring any crazy person. You're going to bring the people that God directs you because there are people that, that's why people, like I said once, they raise up shelters. They raise up water fountains. They realize that Jesus said that when he comes in all his glory, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, because they begin to do those things that God is directing us right now. God is directing us to raise up a youth ministry. It's called Journey of Youth. God is doing that. Because he wants to raise up a powerful ministry for the youth. The youth needs it. But it's in development. Amen. We let God lead us. To direct us. To push us towards his will. Hallelujah. It says. When thou seest the naked. That thou covered him. And that thou hidest not thyself. From thy own flesh. Then, somebody in your sign, write then. Then, 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 then. Then. Judy, say then. No. Uh -huh. Then. Then shall thy light break forth as a morning. People are going to see your light. They're going to see the light of God out of you. They're going to notice. Because you know why? Because you're being different. God calls us to love where there's hate. That's part of us. That's our nature. God calls us to forgive. When somebody's treating us bad, God calls us to forgive. God calls us to be wise. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge me, and I will direct your path. This all comes through the inheritance of God. We have an incorruptible inheritance. Look what God said to me. On one day, I'm, now I'm going to go to the money testimony, because I, I was talking about what a true fast is. And I'm still talking about our inheritance. We have an anointing. We have love, we have peace, we have joy, we have long suffering. When people are doing whatever they're doing and you're in your brain so, saying, Lord, you're gonna have to keep my composure because I'm about to blow up. And the Holy Spirit keeps you. He keeps you. When you see all hell rising up, the Holy Spirit keeps you and allows you to suffer long. Amen, so key, amen. Amen. He's not doing it on purpose. He's doing it so you don't give in to ungodly anger to protect you from sowing the wrong seeds. And that comes from our inheritance. We are so blessed. God's provided so He's provided. He said, My name is Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. Come on. The world is popping all these pills. I go to pray. I start rebuking a pain on my knee, a pain in my kidney, a pain in my heart, a pain in my elbow. And when I wake up the next morning, I have nothing. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The enemy's telling me, you got the coronavirus. You got the coronavirus. You got the coronavirus. I start telling the devil, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. God is a Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth me. Man. And you know what? That incorruptible inheritance falls on me. The enemy's trying to kill my pancreas. You got low, high A1Cs, and I start speaking to my pancreas. My pancreas heal my numbers are low. Devil, you a liar. I ain't taking no insulin. I ain't taking nothing. I ain't going to do none of that. You ain't going to put none of that. I'm here in the name of Jesus. I take in the stripes of Jesus. He got 33 stripes. I got 33 healings. I praise God. Hallelujah. I'm standing in the word of God. Every joint, every marrow. I'm tapping into my inheritance. 
I don't care if I see blood. I'm like, that must be the blood of Jesus manifesting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm just talking about an incorruptible inheritance. You see, when it comes to fear and confusion and mental disorders, according to my family's history, you ever heard the family's history? According to the family's history, I'm supposed to be all over the place. If I'm going to live by my family's history, I'm going to be a woman that's going to get dementia and lose my mind. We but rebuke you know that in Jesus' name. Me, listen, Lem, I, I, of course not. The word of God tells me I have the mind of Christ. Amen. And the Bible tells me that Jesus Christ brings everything to my remembrance that pertains to life and godliness. The word of God tells me that I don't have no bipolar, no disorder, no confusion. We have the mind of Christ. That is my inheritance. God didn't give me confusion. He gave me power, love, a sound mind. This is my inheritance. God said he did not make me a double-minded person, but he's given me faith. We just got to tap in, tap in. When I tell you link into the will of God, link into the will of God, the purpose for your life. If you pursue not your own will, the purpose, the same way God spoke to the apostle Paul, he said, for this purpose, I have calling you. And then you know what? I don't think I'm the only person that got called for a purpose. That's to be selfish, self-centered, one-side-minded. When God says we're all one body, fit it together. And that we all complement each other for his glory. So the true fast... is that we do what God is calling us to do, to live in obedience, to use the anointing. But you know what? If you're not ready and you're not there, then wherever you're at, walk in the purpose of God. You know what's really impacted me? Mark 16. Mark 16 has changed my life. Because if you go to Mark 16, it says that they didn't believe three times. The end of the chapter. It says they didn't believe three times. In other words, they didn't have faith that Jesus said and that he was exactly what he said. But if you read verse 20, it says that they went forth to preach the gospel all over the world and that Jesus worked together with them. And you want to know what? The day the Holy Spirit came down to the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit opened up the mind of the believer. And the Spirit of God made everybody full of his spirit so that we can grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when you grow in faith, you become a new creature. The things that you didn't know become alive and well to you. And if wherever you doubting God, you need to grow and believe. You got to let the Holy Spirit come upon you or manifest out of you in faith of that thing that you're saying that God can't do because God is powerful. Right. There's no shadow of turning in God. Look up what shadow of turning means. God is always in the peak of his power. He doesn't get weak. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't get hungry. He lacks nothing. Amen. Shadow of what, Johnny? Turning.
God's given us victory. There is no shadow of turning in God. And that means that God is always at the peak of his power. He's in full-blown aggression in power his power doesn't get dim you know how you have a a dimmer in your house to make the light go dim yeah god's power never goes dim amen he never weak he's never thirsty he's never hungry he's never tired he's never giving up he's never saying i can't do this when we look at God, we got to look at a full-blown, full power, high energy. He's not like us. He doesn't get tired in any way. We're humans. He's God. So stop comparing our human nature to God. When he said he rested, he rested to finish because he had finished his work. It doesn't mean he was resting because he was tired. <laughs> I, I just praise God. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. God is a good God. I want to read something to you. In this you greatly rejoice now, though now for a little while, if need be, I'm reading in First Peter 1, 6 to 9. And this is about us being discouraged. And I'm going to conclude, okay, with, with this and Philippians. It says, in this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, Lord. that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, that it is tested by fire, may be found to praise. In other words, God, everything that we're going through, is going to wind up in a praise and glory to the Lord. And, and that's what you want. You want to be a cup of glory. Who got a cup? You got a cup, right? It's morning. I'm sure all of you got a cup around you. We, as cups, want to be cups of glory. Amen. That the cup that we produce is glory. And you know what kind of glory? Glory to God. Amen. Amen. You Praise know why? Because you know what I learned? And I, and this is the secret to my, to my church right here. If we quit, the one that gets the glory is the devil. Repeat that. You went off. It's easy to quit and hard to keep going. Listen. Uh, okay. If we quit. If we quit, no quitting. the devil gets the glory in your life. Man. It's no quitting. You know why? Because everybody's going to say, oh, and they said they were a Christian. <laughs> right. Look what the devil did to them. They'll say that. Man. And I'm not here to give the devil glory. I want God to take me through the fire. It's not easy. And I know I'm not asking for nothing easy. But I know that when I come out, I'm coming out as gold. Nice. And I want people to say, look at her life. Amen. She reflects Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh. I want people to say... God is in that woman's life. See, I want them to use the word Jesus. She only talks about Jesus. You see? She only talks about Jesus. See, as long as Jesus is being mentioned, 
when people talk about me, even if they go to the presence of God and fight about me because I want his will. And they're like, Lord, she said, you said, and I'm good with that. As long as Jesus is in it. Amen. Amen. I think it's So it says here, that is good. Though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with exceedingly inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. In other words, not only we're we going to have exceedingly great joy because he's going to bless and bless and bless and bless. Yeah. Oh, good. You know, it's funny because I remember wow. I was going through a trial and I was crying and telling Jackie and she come and she told me one day, I know you're not going to cry with that mansion that God gave you. <laughs> you remember that? Thank you, Lord. And then I'm over here trying to complain to BJ and tell him about the stuff that I'm going on. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about because I look at you and all I see is bless, 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 bless. Yep. Meanwhile, I'm going through all these trials, but when they're looking at me, they're seeing the glory of God. But I know that I'm going through all these trials. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're supposed to reflect. Amen. Amen. The blessing and the mercy of God is supposed to be reflected out of us. That when people look at us, and sometimes I'm like, Lord, how can they see all these blessings when I feel so broken? But I cannot complain about what God is doing. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And I give God all the glory. It's not me. It's God. God is doing what he's doing. To him be the glory. To him be the honor. We just Amen. Have to let God... Do what he's going to do. We got to learn how to tap in. Tap into your inheritance in God. Do you need long suffering? Do you need to count to 20? And Usa, Usa, in the name of Jesus, then do it. <laughs> oh, God, I've been done. <laughs> then do it. You know, Usa, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. It'd be some of Count to a thousand, a hundred uh, backwards. <laughs> Get lost in those numbers where you can hold your composure and say, Lord, you said I got a long suffer. I'm tapping into this. I'm going to start counting to a thousand. And hopefully by the time I get to the number zero, you have changed the whole situation because yeah. I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand. You know, standing is part of our inheritance. It is. You know, when God says stand, stand means don't do absolutely nothing. Standing is just standing. Wow. Standing don't mean stand and do jump jumping jacks. <laughs> it means just stand there. When you don't know, you know what I, God says, when you don't know what I say, when you don't know what to do, just stand, 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 stand. When you don't know what to pray, you say hello to Jesus and you tell him, Lord, I'm waiting for your will. He Amen. understands that. We just got to keep tapping in, amen? Tap into the purpose and will of God. Tap in. It's like a chain. If me and Cat, Cat, go like this with me. Go like this with me. If me and Cat link in our chain, right? Right? And then me, Cat, and Jackie link in. And then Judy links in. The Apostle links in. Raphael links in. Um, BJ links in. Aruna links in, right? We start making a chain of God's will. Amen. And we're all intertwined and interconnected into the, there you go, Raphael, like this, look, like this. <laughs> Link in like a little chain, right? Okay. If we're going to have shackles, okay. let it be the purpose of God. Let God shackle us. Let him bind us and wrap us up with his purpose and his plan and his will for us. Man. Praise the Lord. Praise and God. that we're all interconnected, a sim, Elisa, intertwined, uh, 
um, Kiona, Vinny, that he's there, Sylvia. Everybody out there, the hearing of my voice, if we all do what God is calling us to do, we become interconnected and we become exactly what Jesus said, that we may be one as he and our father was one. Oneness is in God. But if we're all over the place and we're doing our own thing and we're living like Christianity is uh, another day in the club, Yo, you're making a big mistake. That's why this is, um, I'm going to conclude with this. Philippians chapter 4, 6 to 8 says, be anxious for nothing. Anxiety yeah. is not of God. Be anxious for nothing. But in I'm in, I'm in uh, Philippians 4, 6 to 8. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Everything, 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 everything. That's like put everything, everything, everything that you got. Put it all in prayer and supplication. Just take it to God. Take it, Lord. With thanksgiving, okay. let your request be made known unto God. And look, and the God of peace, which surpasses all understanding, he surpasses your understanding, my understanding, the understanding of the devil, anybody's mind. I told God, teach me about finances. Teach me about money. And you know what he told me? Don't even worry about that. I'm in everybody's business. I could teach you anything and everything instantly. I know everything. I know about stock market. I know about gold. I know about embroidery. I know about oil. I know about everything I created at all. I know about computers. There's nothing that I don't know. I said, my God, Father, you're absolutely right. He can provide everything I need because his understanding surpasses all understanding. Yes. He says he will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. You want your mind guarded? Stay in the word. Finally, my brethren, look what he says. Think, think, think. Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is just, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is of a good report, if there be virtue or, and if there be any praise, meditate on these things think about that don't let the devil infiltrate your mind don't let the devil steal what belongs to you you're the deliverer how can you deliver others when you're in bondage impossible impossible it's not gonna happen and if the enemy keep bringing you back into bondage or me into bondage, we're not going to be able to set people free. And that's why we're in this earth. Who's going to pray? Who do we have that's going to volunteer in prayer? Judy could pray. I do. Elisa, are you going to pray? Yeah. Okay, let's let Judy pray first, and then you can pray, Elisa. What are we praying about? <laughs> what I just talked about. Amen. That's why. Listen, let me say something before you pray. These topics that we talk about is what we're going to pray about. Amen. That's why we do all this talking. Yeah, amen. So that we can pray exactly what God talked about. Go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you reflect your glory in our life. That's number one. Number two, I thank you for the inheritance, Lord Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the true fast that you teach us about, Lord Father God. I thank you because your word is the lamp to our feet, Lord Father God, that wherever our feet, it's place, Lord Father God, you 
Light it up, Lord Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your understanding, Lord Father God. Thank you because your word guides us to everywhere and everything we have to do in our lives. Thank you for your purposes and your plans, Lord Father God, because yes, you know what's perfect in our life, Lord Father God. Yes, you Jesus. know what path we need to take. You know what way we need to go, Lord Father God. You know the things that we need to do, Father. Habakkuk says, write the plans down and present them to you, Lord Father God. So I thank you, Father, because we can write these things down and we can present them to you so that you can give us the guidance that we need, Lord Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you for your guidance, Lord, and I love amen. you. Amen, amen. Go ahead, Elisa. Yes, um, Lord, I agree with my sister, Judy, Father God. Dear Lord God Almighty, we come to you gratefully in the name of Jesus to tell you that we are thankful for your presence in our lives. Father God, we thank you for saving us and setting us free through Jesus, Lord. Thank you for all the blessings you have given us, Lord, that inheritance, everything, Lord, because you do everything perfect, Father God. And we really are grateful in our hearts, Lord, for all this thing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Does, do I have anybody else that would like to pray about these things? I pray. Okay. Pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for you today, for these words that we heard today, that your words will guide us and touch our minds, and clear our, our minds and our heart and our souls, Lord, that you manifest in our lives, and that these words are yours. Reach out to each and one of us and those in our lives too, and those who are in need. May you may you manifest in each and one of us in our lives, Lord, and you guide us with your words and wisdom, Lord. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Anybody else? Amen. I pray. Father, pray. I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for uh, this beautiful Zoom today, Father God, continue to mold us and shape us for your glory. Yes, Lord. We just glorify your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father God. And Father, it just feels good to know that we've been chosen by you out of billions of people. You have chosen us, Lord, to reconcile people back yes. to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. But we all have reconciliation, Father God. Yes. And Father God, I just thank you for this beautiful Zoom, uh, Zoom team, Father God. Continue to bless our hearts and mind here, Father God. We thank you for today, Lord. And Lord, like I always say after every Zoom, I'm going to study. And I just thank you, Father God. I glorify your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Father God. Amen. Amen. Anybody else would like to volunteer to pray? That I'll hasn't... pray. Okay, Sylvia, pray. Father, thank you, my Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Father. Yes, because you have allowed us to be part of that covenant, oh Lord. Yes, you have. From generation to generation. Hallelujah. Yes, Glory you to you, my Lord. And Hallelujah. Father, our generations will go forth in your name as well. Thank yes, you, Lord. Will. Hallelujah. Yes, for allowing us to be in that bloodline, oh Lord. Oh, glory to you, my Lord. What a privilege. What an honor. Hallelujah. To be your child. Hallelujah. To be glory sanctified to with the blood of Jesus. Right, oh, glory to you, my Lord. I give you the glory, Father, because you have had such mercy, hallelujah, with men, glory to you, my Lord. I worship your holy name, Father. What a privilege, hallelujah, a privilege to man, glory to you, my Lord. That you dwelleth in us, O oh God, that we are your temple, hallelujah, that your love and that your Holy Spirit dwelleth in us, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Glory to you, my Lord. Forever Thank and you, ever, Jesus. hallelujah. We are sealed, hallelujah, for your kingdom, O oh Lord. Yes, Glory to you, my Lord. And we look forward, Father, 
to all generations. Even if we're not standing here on earth, my Lord, your word and your promises and your covenant will go on forever and ever. Glory to yes, Lord. Lord. So much, hallelujah, that we can stand here and rejoice, Father, because we have you in us. That That's right. Great, hallelujah. That great uh, covenant that you created, Father, that you would dwell in us. Oh, my God. That's how right. Perfect. How perfect was that new covenant that you made, hallelujah. Glory to you that we can stand here, Father, and know and know that you are real because you live inside of us, oh That's Lord. That's right. Lord, I ask you in the name of the mighty name of Jesus to touch all flesh, hallelujah. Draw That's all right. men to you, my Lord, so that they can be filled with the Holy Ghost. So that they can be Jesus part of that name. covenant, oh God. Father, I ask right. you to break the chains, hallelujah. Break the, the chains. Jesus, yeah, that's anyone, right, in Jesus' anyone name. Anyone bound by the devil, Father, in there's Jesus no chain name. that you can't break. There's no chain that you can't sever. That's we are right. the blood of Jesus to those Beautiful, chains, Lord. Father. I ask you to loosen all those who are worshiping the devil, Father. In the Bring mighty name of Jesus. Kingdom of heaven, hallelujah. Beautiful, them, Lord. Right. Move them over to your kingdom, oh God. Yes, Lord. God. Father, we proclaim them for the kingdom of heaven. Yes, in we Jesus do. Mighty in name. Jesus Father, name. there's no one that you can't save. No one that you can't pull out of the pit of hell. Hallelujah. That's right, Lord. That's Father, right. we thank you. Hallelujah. We glorify your holy name. Yes, you we are do. You mighty warrior. You go ahead of us, oh Lord. Thank you, my Father. Beautiful, thank Jesus. You, thank you, my King. Thank, thank you, you, Father. Mm -hmm. That's right, Lord. That's what I'm talking about. The king, the only king, because there is no That's king right. but you, oh Lord. Another king glory like you, Lord. You. Glory, glory, glory to you, my Lord, forever yes. and ever and ever, oh Lord. Yes, Lord. You're so glory, worthy. Glory, glory, glory. So worthy. To you, my Lord. Lord. Glory to you, Father. Yes, Lord. Glory mm -hmm. to you, Lord. Glory to you, Jesus. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to you, Jesus. We love you. We glorify you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to you, my Lord. We have your banner, Father. We have your banner. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if you have an interpretation, Father, give it, oh Lord. Glory to you, Father, because we are weak. Father, thank you because you forgive us when we ask for forgiveness. Thank you because you lift us up when we fall. Thank you because you're always there. You're the best father. Hallelujah. There's no father like you, oh Lord. Thank you, Father, for your mercy, your grace, and your mighty love for mankind. Hallelujah. Glory to you, my Lord. I worship you, Lord. I worship you with all my being. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart, oh Lord, for all the things that you do and for all the things that you're going to do, my Lord. Father, we look forward to all that you have in store for us, for all the plans that you have predestined already, Lord. We can't wait to see them to come to pass, Father. And we rejoice in everything that you do. We rejoice in in, in, in everything, oh Lord, just because we are sealed for your kingdom. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to you, my Lord. I worship your holy name, Father. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else would like to pray that hasn't prayed? I, I muted everybody's mic so that I can here, the spirit. Praise God. Vinny, would you like to volunteer to pray? 
if you do un unmute your mic, because we're talking about God's inheritance, his beautiful spirit inside of us. You know, God is a good God. He's with us. He loves us. He cares about us. And um, it's time to say goodbye. It's time for us to praise God. This is a serious walk. Hallelujah. Serious. What God's done for us. We got to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So once again, this is Messengers of Light in the Antilles. I don't know if anybody said they wanted to pray. Your, mute, your mics are muted. So you got to unmute yourselves if you want to pray because I can't, I can't hear you if you want to pray. I'll say a prayer. Okay, Asim, go glory, ahead. Glory, glory, glory. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and the Father. I can't and hear it. <clears throat> Father, can you hear me? I can hear you, Asim. Pray. Okay. Father, glory, glory, in the mighty glory, name glory. Of Jesus Christ, we pray. Glory. We, come, we humbly request sanctification. I can't hear it. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, but. Let's go. Keep Go ahead, Sim. Go. We, 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 we humbly um, come to your, your throne and we request the humbleness in thought, spirit, and mind. We reject um, pride in Jesus' name. We come through in your word and we worship you. Uh, Father, please help us during our days and our nights. And please uh, rectify anything that's an error in your eyes and anything that you want us to change in our lives, change our hearts, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And please protect us. Please give us joy in our hearts. Um, thank you for the holiday season. Thank you for um, giving us uh, Christmas and, and, and thank you for being you. Um, like, uh, dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for being born, Lord. Thank you for giving your only begotten you. son to the world because you so love the world. You gave your only begotten son. Thank you, uh, Thank Jesus, you, Jesus, for accepting that responsibility and taking it all the way and being faithful all the way to the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Yeah. Vinny, you going to pray? No. Well, I want to give everybody an opportunity. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, so we're going to say goodbye. We're going to thank the Lord once again for his beautiful presence, for using these Zoom channels. Remember that Jesus Christ Mother. loves you. He gave his life for you. Mother. He died for you. He cares for you. God is not mad at you. It's God's desire that we all come to repentance, that we all come and seek God. We have an incorruptible inheritance. All we have to do is tap in to our inheritance. God will bless us. Hallelujah. 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 I'll make a pray. Who's going to pray? Right, I'm going to make a post prayer here. A prayer through the, through the word, right? Through the word. Uh, it's Colossians chapter 1. God bless everybody. Chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. Amen. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not case to pray for you, so family, to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom, spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, Full pleasing him, being faithful, fruitful in every good work, increasing the knowledge of God, and strength for all might, recording to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering and joy, and giving thanks to the Father who has uh, qualified us to be partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God. So you give them the wisdom to your people, the understanding. They could walk in the inheritance, Lord. They could walk in the fullness of the fruit, being fruitful and increase the knowledge of your son, Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Father God, because we'll go walk with us as your sons of light, Lord, and represent you, Lord Jesus. We have to be ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God to salvation, Lord. According to your mighty word, Father God, who has delivered us from the powers of darkness and committed to the kingdom of his son, of his love, Lord. 
who has redeemed us through his blood and the forgiveness of sin. And I thank you, Father God. Father, I thank you for this beautiful uh, prayer, Lord, that you could do upon your people and continue growing grace and knowledge of your son. Not to be ashamed of nothing, for they're being chosen for purpose and brands in the midst of warfare, in the midst of madness all around, Lord. That we are the one who has the solution, Lord God. It's your body, the church. And be walking the order of your word. Be walking the wisdom, understanding. You should give the people the, the love, the truth, Lord. Stretch our hands, tell them you can be healed, be, be delivered, be transformed. Blind open, rise from the dead. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Be your word says, my God. We sons who from them believe, and these sons and daughters are your sons and daughters. Let them see your glory. Let them will grow in your son's grace and knowledge to go forth in one's souls, my God. Because in times we live in this it's ugly, Father, but we got the, you got the last word for us, Lord. Keep continue multiplying new people to the Zoom. They could see that you are alive to work through your people, oh God. But we are the body of Christ, individually, Father. We thank you, Father God. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Praise God. This is Messengers of Light once again, praising the Lord Jesus Christ, giving God glory. It's time for us to say goodbye. Remember that Jesus loves you. He died for you, rose on the third day, and he is sitting at the right hand of God the Father. We love you so much. We just pray that you're able to feel the love and the mercy of God and that you understand that God is not mad at you. He wants you to serve him in spirit and truth he wants you to turn from your sin that's what he said to the women to the woman go and sin no more Amen. okay uh Amen. we're gonna have cat cat can you say goodbye uh goodbye everybody god bless you bless you god bless you cat um you tonight, Apostle, you can you say goodbye God bless everybody. May have a great day and a blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's still with us. He's always going to be up to the end of the age. God bless. Have a wonderful day. Amen. Um, Brother Rafael, can you say goodbye? God bless everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. We pray that these Zoom prayer meetings have been blessing you, Rafael. We're happy you're with us. We love you in the Lord. Amen. Um, Jackie, can you say goodbye? Goodbye. God bless. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. Uh, I don't know if Judy's there. Oh. Judy, you there? Can you say goodbye? You got to mute your mic, though. God bless everybody. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Brother In my house, we don't say goodbye. We say see you later. Okay. See you later. See you later. Love you. See you later. Bless Love you. you. Um, brother, uh, brother BJ, can you say goodbye? God bless, God bless, God bless. God bless. Amen. Bye. Brother BJ. Aruna, we love you. What's up, bless can, you. can you say goodbye? Uh, she says goodbye all and have a blessed day. Amen. Brother right, Asim. Amen. All right, goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Um, Sister Lisa, can you say goodbye, mommy? Glory, glory. Goodbye, everyone. Have a blessed day. Special I have Lisa, such a wonderful you. prayer team. Sister Kiona, can you say goodbye? Blessings to you all. You are. Bless you, Sister Kiona. Amen. Amen. We love you, Amen. the Lord, Sister Amen. Kiona. Amen. Bless you. Sylvia Linsalado, she's on the fire of God. You know, the fire Amen. of God came on my sister Linsalado. When the mm. devil tried to take one of her babies, that girl has made a stance. Woo! Now she's on fire. Sylvia, can you say goodbye? Goodbye, everyone. God bless you. I love you. May the Lord bless you mightily. May the joy Amen. of the Lord be upon you. And uh, may you win souls for the kingdom Amen. of heaven today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Every Amen. day is an assignment. Every day. Amen. Brother Vincent, Amen. do you want to say Amen. goodbye? Oh. I don't want him to be so shy. We want to hear him. Amen. 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 We love you, Vinny. We know you're there. We love you so much. God bless you. Amen. And we're just going to say we love you in the Lord. May the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord enlarge your borders, your coast, your territory. May the Lord give you the earth as an inheritance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive the blessing of God Amen. in Jesus' mighty Amen. name. Amen. And tonight, Bye -bye we now. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen.